Greetings, siblings in Christ. I am Pastor Barb Street, one of the assistants to Bishop Regina Hasnelli in the Southeastern Minnesota Synod of the ELCA. It's good to be with you again this Monday morning. Before I get into my Monday morning devotion, I just want to share with you that beginning next week, our um, assistant to the bishop staff and Bishop Regina are going to be on hiatus from our daily devotions as we concentrate our efforts and energies in planning and bringing about our Synod Assembly, which will be on May 8th and will be digital. So that's very new to us and we are excited and um, can't wait to be with everybody together on that day. But um, we are going to be taking a break from our daily devotions for about a month so that we can concentrate our efforts there. My prayer is that in the midst of all of that and each day, you'll be able to take a few moments each day and concentrate on a, a devotion or a Bible reading or a meditation, something to bring you yet closer in your relationship to God and be life-giving for you. So as many of you know, as I've told you before, I grew up in the Catholic Church. And one of the things that I remember about being Catholic was something called Holy Days of Obligation. And those are exactly what they were. Holy Days that you were obligated to celebrate and attend Mass together. And I felt like there were 365 Holy Days of Obligation, <laughs> particularly being a young Catholic girl in a almost completely Lutheran community. I may have mentioned to you also before that I was the only Catholic girl in my, my grade at school. And we had to go to a neighboring town to go to a Catholic church because there was none in the community that I grew up in. So oftentimes the Holy Day of Obligation masses would happen obviously in the evenings and uh, my parents were adamant that we would attend mass, which meant sometimes missing you know, sporting events or I don't know, anything else that it felt like all the Lutheran kids were doing that I didn't get to do. <laughs> so um, one of those holy days of obligation was when we celebrated the Annunciation of our Lord. Um, and actually in our Lutheran tradition, we also um, remember the Annunciation. The Annunciation actually was celebrated this past Friday on March 25th. And the Annunciation, or it's also called the Annunciation of the Blessed Virgin Mary or the Annunciation of our Lord, is the celebration of the announcement by the Archangel Gabriel to the Blessed Virgin Mary that she would conceive and become the mother of Jesus, the Jewish Messiah and the Son of God. Make, marking his incarnation. Gabriel told Mary to name her son Jesus, which meant Yahweh is salvation. And according to Luke uh, chapter 1, verse 26, the Annunciation occurred in the sixth month of Elizabeth, Mary's cousin, pregnancy with John the Baptist. And many Christian um, uh, different Christian uh, denominations observe this event with, it's called the Feast of the Annunciation. Um, and it's approximately, um, excuse me, the approximation of the Northern Vernal Equinox, <laughs> nine months before Christmas, which makes sense, right? Because you are pregnant for nine months. Um, the Annunciation is a key, uh, key part of the story of God with us. I'd like to read to you um, from Luke, the Gospel of Luke, um, the Annunciation story. We are in Luke chapter 1, starting verse 26. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. 
and the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and he said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Well, Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I'm a virgin? The angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy and he will be called the Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing is impossible with God. Then Mary said, here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. And then the angel departed from her. One of the callings I have here in the Synod office is that I work with call process, which means I work with congregations who are looking for pastors and pastors who are looking for congregations. And part of that process is sometimes we have what's called an interim pastor, who is the transitional pastor in between those two things coming together. So every month I meet with our interim pastors and this past month, it was um, on Friday, the Annunciation Day of our Lord. And one of the interims shared a devotion and it was this one. And um, part of what we were instructed to do was just think on that text and listen and, and hear what comes out to us. And so I did. And it was read to us twice. And both times, the phrase that really struck me is simply two words. Favored one. The angel Gabriel said, greetings, O oh, favored one. And then later said, Mary, do not be afraid, for God has found favor on you. I thought about that term and I thought, gosh, if somebody came to me and said, guess what? You are God's favored one. What would that mean to me? Like, how do we define that short phrase, favored one? You know, at first I, I start to think, oh my gosh, I'm... I'm the lucky one. Like, this is going to be great. Um, you know, favored makes you feel like um, special. Um, I think of happiness. I think of, um, you know, being able to um, have support. And, and I don't think of negative terms when I think of favored one. So I was thinking about that, being the favored one or having favor found in you. And then I started thinking about this week, which is Holy Week. And I started thinking about Mary's journey during this week, which I sometimes think we don't think about because, of course, we're thinking about Jesus. But I think about Mary's journey this week and her journey of watching all that happened to Jesus that led him to the cross. And I think about her standing at the foot of the cross with John. And I wonder if she says, I wish I wasn't the favored one. I don't want to be the favored one because being favored or finding favor in me has meant 
difficulty, suffering, and sadness. Are those words you would think of when you think of being favored? What if Mary thought, I just want to be ordinary. I just want to have my son. As a mother, and even if I weren't a mother, I think just as a human being, I think about how difficult it is to lose someone that you love. And if losing someone you love in the way that Mary did or in any way is being favored, heck, who wants to be favored? So it made me think about what does it really mean for the angel Gabriel to say to Mary, God has found favor in you. Do not be afraid, O oh favored one. I wonder if being favored doesn't necessarily mean easy or happiness or no suffering. Oh, favored one, I will be with you always. I love you. I will love you and be with you in your suffering and in your joy. Oh, favored one, I will carry you when you cannot walk. Oh, favored one, I will give you rest when you are weary. Oh, favored one, you are mine, and I have called you by name. Friends, as we enter into this Holy Week, my prayer is that this Holy Week, you discover new truths about God that deepen your understanding and your relationship with God and God's relationship with this world. My prayer is that you hear God calling you, O oh, favored one. And knowing that, that that brings a deep, profound joy in the midst of struggle and crisis and conflict and suffering. Because we go at that, not alone, but with our God. Jesus traveled this week, and his mother watched that. Oh, favored one. Never walking a step alone. Always being carried by God. May it be so for you. May it be so for me. As we walk this holy week together. In Jesus' name, amen.